running. Let me kill it. Okay, hopefully it comes back. There we go. All right, so now, nope. Those are my kids. Um, this is my life phone here I'm using, very risky. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do is deploy this to a device. It's gonna send it to my phone. Let's show it here on screen. All right, so this one, very simple demo. It, it basically only accepts a very, very narrow list of animals. You see the name of an animal, it shows you a picture of the animal. So there's about 15 or so animals that are accepted, and it actually runs inside of a loop. So I can say, for example, dog, cat, boa, rhinoceros. <laughs> Not sure what you said, please try again. See, that's, that's the thing. If you try to say, I, I, it's still trying to recognize right now, and I'm saying nonsense, it's not showing anything. Yeah. So it basically keeps looping and saying, not sure what you said, so I'll just pause and then say something more meaningful like, puppy. That's impressive. Not the puppy, but the technology. <laughs> oh, but puppies are always great. And now again, it's gonna say, not sure what you said, please try again, right? Is it gonna? It's possible that the loop might, uh, might freeze at some point. I think it did. Kitten. There you go. That's impressive. Yeah, kittens are, are great. I mean, kittens always get you higher scores in any presentation. Yeah. People love kittens. So, all right, there you go. So that's the, um, let, let me show you how the code works for this. But you saw how the, the recognition was actually quite good. Even when you tried to derail it there with your rhinoceros. Yeah. And then when I started like talking on top of it and everything. So there's different ways you can deal with this, but phrase lists or programmatic lists are great for that because they really narrow down what you can say. And then it just goes like, you know what? If you say anything outside of that, I just won't allow it. So uh, again, in this case, there was also a speech synthesis. I disabled it in this case, so it wouldn't talk on top of me, but you use the Windows Media Speech Recognition I initialize a recognizer object, well, I create the object here. And then in my on navigator to, what I do is I first create this dictionary where this is where I have all these images and I'm basically matching the words that are accepted to the actual images. So if I said boa or snake, I'm obviously showing the same picture. Or in the case of guinea pig, there's a space in guinea pig and what's recognized, but there's no space in the file. So this is basically just ma a mapping between words and images. So this goes in my dictionary called image files. <coughs> so I create a speech synthesizer, but I did not use it. I commented that part uh, in a demo. Here I create a new speech recognizer. And then this is where I'm creating my constraints. So I have a string array uh, of animals, and this is where I'm putting all the different words that can be said. So this is my programmatic list. Boa, snake, bunny, rabbit, canary, 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 yeah, canary. Canary. Yeah. Uh, bird, cat, dog, etc. cetera. Um, and then what I do is I create a list constraint from this. So I say speech recognition, speech recognition list constraint from my list of animals. And then I give it a name called animal pick. This is the name of my constraint. And then I get a new constraint out of this. And then I simply add that constraint to my recognizer. And then I compile my constraint. For the recognition, right here, so this is just to deal with the continuous recognition here. While the recognition is enabled, um, let me just move it here like this. There you go. First of all, I go, I am, in this case, I'm actually not even looking at a success. I could have looked at success first. I'm just going straight for the speech recognition result. So I, I first get it via recognize async. Notice how I did not use a UI in this app. Because it was all about just saying the animals and showing the photo, I felt like I didn't have to show the UI all the time. But again, it's a good idea if you can show, I didn't, I didn't know at some point if it was still listening to me, so that's not a great UI for that. It'd be good if there was a little pop-up that says, or a little string that says listening, or done, and something like that. So I do recognize async, and then I immediately look at the confidence and see how if I get low or rejected, immediately my result is gonna be not sure what you said, please try again. If I don't get that, then I check to see if I got high confidence. If I got high confidence, I'll say, my feedback is gonna be showing V, and then I go read directly the speech recognition text and then photo. 
And then if it's medium, so it's, so it's not low, rejected, or high, therefore it's medium, I say, I think you want the puppy photo or the something like that. So this is how I would deal with scenarios where I might say something that's a lot, did you say puppy or guppy or, you know, something like that. Um, <clears throat> and then finally, this is just my code that basically extracts the, uh, the image file. So I basically go get to my images folder, get my file image path based on the recognition result. I open the file asynchronously. I create a new bitmap. And then I finally set it as my source for, for my stream. And this is how I just show the picture on screen. Here, this is where I check for my privacy statement. So pretty straightforward. Again, it's the same code that you saw earlier. And that's it. You saw how with, with not much code, I was able to create an app that basically does speech recognition. And the cool thing is you can actually have multiple grammars like this, where at one point you're asking for animals, another point you're asking yes or no. So you can mix and match grammars like this. And we're going to talk about this shortly as well. So moving right along. Let's now talk about custom grammar. So this was one form of custom grammar, the programmatic lists. But now we're going to talk about truly, truly custom grammars. Those are the grammars where if you want to really push the envelope, if you want to have all these options of having some optional words, uh, maybe different combinations of those words together, and um, maybe sometimes it could be just a few words or more words, but you, you, if you were to create all the different possibilities in a programmatic list, it would become way too big. So custom grammars are actually based on a standard from the W3C known as SRGS, or the Speech Recognition Grammar Specification. And um, so this is a W3C standard that is fully supported by Microsoft. And it's wor it works with Windows Phone 8.1. will come to Windows 10 as well. And um, it's also an XML document. So kind of like the VCD that you created in the last module. But this time, it's just about in-app speech rec recognition. There's no notion of deep linking or putting like examples or things like that. It's purely about how can you, how can you mix and match the words. Uh, so if you, if you have a very advanced scenario, or at some point, if you start building your programmatic list, and you realize, my, my list is just getting way too big, then it's time to switch to an SRGS grammar. And also, it works offline. So that's the cool thing. So why would you use SRGS? Uh, if you want to specify the order in which the words are and phrases must be spoken, if you want to combine words from multiple lists and phrases, if you want to link to other grammars as well, so it's a good way sometimes if you have multiple apps, you can start reusing grammars from other apps and link to them. Uh, the cool thing also, you can assign a weight or, or to an alternative word. So it will have more probability to recognize one word over another. If based on user testing, you realize that people say this more often, but sometimes they say this, you can start tweaking it this way. It's very powerful. Uh, you can include optional words and phrases, which I think really highly affects the quality because uh, I can say open door, or I can say open the door, and some people might say the, other people might not. It depends, usually the more computer savvy people understand that you stick to the commands, the general public might go with pure natural language processing. And also, you might want to use special rules. And you can also uh, specify pronunciations either in line or in a grammar as well. So this is an example of an SRGS grammar. So what we have on screen right here on the right is an XML document, which is a grammar file. Every grammar file has a root element always. And then you start defining your different rules. So you see, for example, right here, we have a, the first rule ID is called, the root is called play commands. And play commands says that you have um, a play action, then you have the in between, and then you have a file words that follows. And a play action can be either play, start, begin, one of play, start, or begin. And then the file words would be one of song, tune, track, or item. So with this, SRGS grammar now, the user can say, uh, play the tune, uh, start the item, uh, begin the song, play the track. And of course, this one actually forces you to say the, but there's also a way, and I'll show you another grammar afterwards, where we can make the optional. So you can just say play song, play track, start tune, stuff like that. Uh, and then the cool thing is that you can standardize with a tag. 
to basically allow the users that whatever they say, you can say, no matter what the output is, just output the word song. So even if they said tune, track, or item, the tag output should be song. So that whenever I do my recognition, just feed me song, and that's what I understand. Um, <clears throat> OK, so if you want more information on creating this, we have documentation at ak.ms slash create grammar that gives you more explanations on a deep understanding of how the grammars can be structured, what elements are allowed, and things like that. Once you've created your grammar, you need to load it at startup. So that means you're going to have to, uh, right here again, you create a speech recognizer. And then right here, you're going to uh, load from application URI async. You said control two, right? Yes. OK, so right here, oh, there you go. Get file from application URI async. This is where we load our grammar. Oh, I'm going to mess this up completely, but this is fun. Um, and then. <laughs> And then after that, we simply call um, speech recognition grammar file constraint. We pass a storage file. Uh, we give it a name. In this case, we call it colors. And then we get a file constraint out of it. We provide a UI option because we're going to use the recognition with UI. We compile. We then add our grammar file constraint to our recognizer constraints list. And then we finally compile the constraints. Then at this point, the recognition is the same as what we did before. So escape. Oh. Yay. All right, let's look at custom grammars. So for custom grammars, uh, let me show you a couple examples. So let me go back to the, the quick start that's already on MSDN today. So you can look at uh, right here, for example, I have a grammar here for like SRGS, uh, yes, no. So this is an example of how you would accept yes or no. Rule ID, yes or no. And then one of. Yes, yeah, yep, yep, uh-huh, yeah, yes. I, I don't know what that one means. <laughs> doesn't um, make any sense to me either. Yeah, and then uh, and then for nope, it was basically one of, no, nope, nah, uh-uh. This is kind of confusing, like uh-huh and uh-uh, I don't know. Um, not a good example here. <laughs> so this is the yes, no, and then there's also another one with colors right here. The colors one is kind of cool because it allows you to mix and match things like uh, a background and a border and text. And then you can choose a color chooser where uh, you can uh, basically specify either a background color, a border color, and then you can repeat them the way you want. And then it shows you all the different colors that are supported, red, orange, yellow, brown, green, cyan, purple, magenta. So if I run this, let me just... Unlock my phone here. Restart this. OK. And then run this on my device. OK, so now if I go with, for example, an SRGS grammar file constraint, this one here, I can give different combinations of colors and uh, border or text or background. So for example, if I want to go uh, continuous here, gray text, red background, white background, yellow border, blue text. So it basically goes through a lot of combinations like this. And it might say, like, didn't get it now? Yeah, it's still trying to understand what I said. And that's where you can get some unexpected results here. If they, they probably, the, the sample here was probably accepting low quality recognitions, which is usually not recommended. That's why low recognition, usually good idea to ignore it. Let me show you another example of a cool, whoop, of a cool um, way of using SRGS. This is a grammar that I've created for a little project I'm working on. You remember these old um, adventure games from the 80s? So where you would just type text on screen, it would show text to you, and then um, it would basically, you would have to read the text. There was no graphics. And if you wanted to say, like, go north, enter the house, and uh, walk down the path. So I figured this would be great to actually play these games completely hands-free, and, uh, and eyes-free as well. You don't even have to look at the screen. So I did a little prototype here, and it's basically just a recognition itself. So if I look at, I call it text adventure. And what I have here is an SRGS command that's a little, a little more advanced. So first of all, my 
my top level, my root is top level, and my top level says that it's going to be one of either a general action, a move action, or a game command. So, for example, what is a general action? So, a general action is going to be, um, first of all, it's going to look at verbs, and then, so it's going to accept one or one verb, followed by zero or one. See, this is how you can make an optional item. Zero or one of under, over, in, inside, on top of the a, uh, and then followed by a thing, and then followed by zero or one of using with, under, over, in, inside, on top of, at, the, my, a, uh, and followed by another thing. Now, what are the verbs and things? So you probably recognize what you can do with those games. You can say open, close, read, examine, look, proceed, take, pick up, get, grab. So you can see here how if you were trying to create a phrase list from this, it would get really complicated fast. And then, because there's a lot of different things here. And what are the things you can do? It could be things like a mailbox, a leaflet, a window, house, table, sword, axe, troll. Yeah, troll. Open dictation, the word troll doesn't show up. Even though they're very common on the internet, um, no, the word troll just didn't show up. Uh, around, knife, door, forest. So what's the result of all this if I run this? So for example, a move action would be move and then a direction. And then after that, I can say under, over, in, inside, on the things. 